Um, I also like to do self-help things. And I um, recently started listening to an audiobook version of Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. Are there any um, Tolle heads out there? Okay. Um, and I'm enjoying it, but I'm having a, a bit of a hard time grasping the concepts. Uh, this wasn't helped by the fact that I was listening to it on shuffle um, for three hours. So tell everybody about your film a little bit. What, what's it about and how, uh, and how it came about? Yeah. It's a feature film, 78 minutes long. It was shot on 16 millimeter. Uh, we're from Canada. This is a Canadian film. This is the U.S. premiere. And it's an anti-comedy about a bunch of people who are, I guess, not having a very good time in life, I would say. <laughs> 16 millimeter. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, there's a resurgence for that. We were just talking about that yesterday. Is that was that was that something that was very important to you? Like the aesthetic of how you shot it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've always wanted to shoot in film, so I really wanted my first feature film to be shot on film, and then it also matched the uh, tone that we're trying to like go for. Mm -hmm. So that was a big part of. Was it was it tough to convince your producing team to to, to do it that well, way? Well, we still financed the yeah. entire movie. Oh, okay. What happened was we wanted to shoot ten minutes of the movie on sixteen and then do multiple formats. And what happened was we loved how it looked and it looked perfect for the film. And because of that, we were like, you know what? Screw it. We'll just figure out the financing later. We'll just keep shooting on film and throwing money at it. Yeah, and we, it was our own money, so we didn't really yeah. care yeah. that much. <laughs> well, we did. But. We did. But we did. <laughs> Hey, we love we making the movie more than, than yeah. the money. So. Yeah, nice. So, in in the context of, of making this film and, and and talking about it, what were some of the interesting things that you came across as a first time director that you're going to take with you into the next project? Um, well, it was tough shooting on film when you're using a lot of first time actors who are improvising a lot mm. in the movie because uh, there's a lot of uh, we wanted to make it a really kind of real naturalistic kind of acting, so right. we used a lot of first-time actors or non-professional actors so that was kind of a tough thing to do so I don't know yeah I mean also just kind of like we, this was a very improvised film we put a lot of it kind of like together we knew what we were gonna do scene by scene but the dialogue we were kind of like let's make it naturalistic let's do it on set we'll talk with the actors see what they want to talk about and we'll kind of progress on to what the scene is gonna be and um, you know maybe for the next one we can kind of more so furbish that and do less improvisation although we do love the improv part of it because it makes it so much more yeah. natural and mm -hmm. real life esque did, was there was, was, did you outline certain things and, and, and block things out uh, ahead of time so that you knew what how it was going to move forward and, mo and, and, and give momentum and give, or how, how did you open up the net for them to do the improv? Yeah, we had an overall arc of the movie, like where we wanted to start and end, and then uh, for the actors who would come up, because it's a bunch of different people, so, it's a, so it follows like five different like vignettes, I guess, like uh, storylines. So for each of them, we would just email them, so this is what you're going to be doing. We didn't really have a proper script, like we, most of the movie was written on Gmail, essentially. Like, <laughs> nice. Yeah, Facebook, Facebook chat, like telling all the other, like, okay, you're going to be doing this on Wednesday, and that's yeah. how it came up. But uh, we had an idea, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. For you, was that the same experience? Or? Yeah, and we also took a lot of like improv stuff from our own lives or things that were happening with our friends, kind of inside jokes. So there's a lot of kind of inside jokes in the film that we just laugh at quite a bit. How 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 is the outtake footage? Are you guys got a lot of good not stuff? Much. No, well, not yeah. much. We used really? probably most of it. We couldn't afford to uh, not use Cause all of it. Film. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> to make it to seventy eight minutes, I don't think we had to. We we took out one scene. Yeah. Well, two. So we cut shortened one scene quite a bit when I'm in the. I, I I'm in the movie as well. Um, and just sitting in a bathtub eating oh, yeah, pizza at so one long. point, and then I call a pizza guy and I tell him that they put the wrong food on the pizza, oh, yeah. and uh, we cut that part out, and then we cut this entire scene out with uh, one of our actors, this comedian who's talking to this other uh, fan, and they're discussing famous people that they just seen on the street and in they LA. talk about them. Nice. Yeah. Kind of. But yeah, we yeah. had to cut that out because it was too long and it just didn't work out for the film. But, but other than that, we were very it was very important to just try to use all the footage we can, and we shot. Uh, we shot a portion of the film and we kind of were like, we had a big stop in the film. We didn't mm -hmm. shoot for a while and then we started shooting again. Then when we went to editing, we took a lot of the stuff that we shot the first day of shooting a while back and we put it in the film later on kind of and we kind of figured out through editing how we can use that footage and it really worked out I think. 
Nice. Awesome. Yeah. What do you guys love about being indie filmmakers? This dress. <laughs> just kidding. I don't, I don't know. Uh, making movies, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's a lot. I find that it's, it's, it's easier and more liberating in some ways to make movies where it's just me and him kind yeah. of being like, let's do this movie and you know what? Let's just do it. And we're going to, don't worry about the financing and all of that stuff. Just do it for the love of making movies. And then you don't have to deal with any sort of other underlying things that might come up like with, with, uh, yeah. producers and all that stuff but of course like we get freedom, I guess. yeah the freedom of being able to do what you want kind yes. of. and it's awesome you could just step outside and just shoot a movie yes. um, you don't have to kind of do this whole pre-production process beforehand you do the pre-production of writing the script figuring out what, what kind of aesthetic you want with the film and then you just shoot the movie you don't have to think about yeah. it all the other things and that's the liberating part about being an independent filmmaker getting like, up and going yeah just oh, like even it. on set it's like so much more relaxed like it's all our friends are crewing like I mean like they're all like in film themselves so like you know they're professional crewmen but they're all our friends so like we end up hanging out on set and like we take like two hour breaks and then one time we're like streaming the basketball game while we're shooting because <laughs> yeah. we're shooting with no sound so there's like the basketball you know we're just yeah. stopping to watch basketball yeah and, and we're like <laughs> I, sometimes uh, me or him would boom and be directing at the same time so we have like a <laughs> shotgun mic and like okay you do boom this time because we don't have a boom operator yeah, yeah, yeah. so then we're booming and like okay so you're gonna do this and it's like all just like really punk rock anarchy yeah, yeah. nice yeah. is that is that is that uh, do you feel like you've hone that style enough to, to attempt this again? Or is this a one time and I'm done, we're gonna do something a little bit more structured? Uh, no, I think I would like to keep a similar kind of structure, maybe make like the, the tone of the movie different, but like the approach, I don't think it would, I can't really see it changing that much. Maybe but we were talking about one thing before we came here. We saw this the movie Uncut Gems. Uh -huh. And at the end, I don't wanna spoil anything. You're saying like everybody probably screamed at the end. Yeah. How crazy that of a Like I screamed at, at a pivotal moment in the movie. I like, and, and I usually don't react. So like I thought how fun it would be as a filmmaker to have that reaction you know like it's an amazing reaction like people that. screaming like, I don't so know. this film itself it's kind of it's much more it's, it's challenges the audience I find whereas we still want to do that yeah. but we want to do it on a, on, a, on a level where we have that as well where we have the stakes have risen even more for, for the characters yeah. and stuff like that. That's yeah. kind of what we want to explore more so awesome. for the next one. Is it going to be on film again or are you guys going to go digital? Oh, uh, if we get money, I would love to shoot on film again. Yeah. So like that's a, maybe that's the other thing that we'd like to do, maybe pursue actual funding and product, like a production company. And if the funding is there, I would love to There's shoot There's nothing like that aesthetic, right? No, I don't, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of digital, to be honest. I love how film looks and uh, yeah, so if I could keep doing that, I would. Yeah, and we were ta uh, talking about the 16 and how it how it really shaped the aesthetic of the film and how everything the landscapes and everything looks so much different but it really creates something for the film and uh, I think it wasn't just shooting on film it was where we got it processed we got it processed like it's, yeah, mostly yeah. at Niagara Custom Lab in, in I believe, Toronto and also at Mel Studio, and they had two differing uh, approaches to how they processed and digitized the film, and it really made it like look a certain way, and it really added and contributed to the aesthetic of the film. Awesome. Yeah. So, as filmmakers, we look at these films and we go, you know, okay, I should have cut here, should have been tighter there. I don't want to know those things from you. What I want to know from you, what do you think you nailed? I think there's some scenes that I really like, that, like the very naturalistic uh, scenes with like this, especially this one couple, young couple, they, they, I don't know, they see, they, they come across with like a lot of like, I don't know, chemistry and it looks, you know, the, the, the film, like handheld kind of film, I don't know, I think that's probably like what looks nicest, maybe. Yeah, I agree, I think that what we nailed was the look. I think the look is really nice, um, and of course, some of like the the, the stuff overall with the uh, the actors is just really natural. What's wrong? I have depression in addition to meds and working out. Um, I also like to do self-help things. I think I have tapeworm. I 
you think that plane's going to Las Vegas? I like Vegas. I called the earth and I lost and I lost it all. My buddy Mitch, he's gonna train me. We're gonna go to his cabin next month and eat fish, and get buff. Thank you.